<laughs> let's get back. Let's get back on track, bro. Answer the next question. If you see it, you see the next question up there. Yeah, it's from yeah. Uh, I think Guthrie Tyrone or Tyrone Guthrie. It says, "Do you think the current four by one really world record is under threat at any time soon?" Um, you want to start or you want me to go? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> 38, 38, 30, 36, 36, 36, 36, 8. 36, 8 is a gigantic order. <laughs> 37 <laughs> is a tall order. 37 low is a tall order. 36, 8, you're looking at the fact of everything has to be perfect. The environment, your competition, the elements, everyone's feeling ready to run. Everyone's pretty much at their peak. You got to remember, for them to run that 36A, Team Jamaica, you had everyone at the Olympic finals. That means that they're at their peak. That means their training has went well. They're running at their top form, and they're going out there to do that. How many times do we have Olympic finals for the 4 by one Every four years. <laughs> Same yeah. thing with world championships. Every two years. So to make that happen, it has to make sure that lightning has to be the stars at the line. Lightning has to be in the bottle. But I believe that with the talent that we have today, with the right training, I believe it's possible. It could, it could happen. It's, it could be threatened. I think we could shock ourselves actually a lot because 37-0, which is the American record, isn't that far off from a 36-8. It's a fact of the timing, precision, the handoffs, and the confidence of the team that's getting to stick around. Justin, I, I, I really beg to differ with you, man. I think we, got, we have Nesta Carter at 978. Uh, eight all time. We have Michael Freighter, I think at nine eighty eight. You know what I mean? And his personal best. And and let's let's remember he he was banging that second leg, man. Uh, he was doing just as just as good of a job. Not maybe not as well as you, but he's he was on that level, man. He was on one. Then we have Blake at third leg to Asafa. Blake at nine six nine to 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 not Asafa to Usain Bolt at nine five eight. And let's keep in mind that all these guys have already ran their PBs before. So we have 978, 98, 96, 95 to create the synergy of these guys who've been, who know each other, who've been training for a while to get that 36-8. So I don't think that it's, it's touchable this year. Touchable, yes, in time, but this year, no. Okay. I mean, you know what? There's more than one way to get to a number, right? We learned that in math class a long time ago. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact is, I mean, if you look at the athletes that we have right now, and let's just say, let's put out a scenario that they're going to come with their best this year, right? So let's say, let's say Coleman gets back to his 9.74. Curly gets back into, into 100 meter shape. He's down to 9.8, 9.74 on that back stretch. Then you got Arian Knight. On that, on that turn. And then you got Noah allows bringing it home. You can't tell me, I'm looking at your face right now, because you know that is a formidable, a very formidable four by one team right there. If they hand those sticks off correctly and get it around the track, boy, boy, boy. Hey, listen, you looking at something, you looking at something crazy. I I'm not gonna lie to you. That that does sound like a yeah, you got you got Coleman at nine seven, you got yeah Fred at nine seven. Um, Boy, let's let's put it like this: you even <laughs> got to put all of them at even nine seven. Let's put Coleman at nine eight, a nine eight low. You could put Fred Curley at nine eight mid, nine eight low. You could put Arian at nine nine low to nine eight high, and then you're gonna put Noah at nine eight low, nine eight mid. All those guys running at that time, there's, there has, I don't think there's been a relay team that consisted of consistent times like that to begin with. So all that going around the track, that's threatening that world record. You can't tell me any different. Nah, nah. Listen, you got me thinking now because, shoot, you might have Mike Marsh thinking now. <laughs> Mike, I just, might, I just need some credit, man. You, you might some have, credit. You have Mike Marsh. I mean, all, if all these guys get to, to the Olympic trials and make it through healthy, God, God bless them too, that they, they will. You know what I mean? We, I, I didn't think about it like that. Not when you, I get you putting them at nine, eight, but putting up their PBs. Cause that's what I did for the Jamaican guys. Uh, 
Yeah. I mean, but uh, yeah, what I'm I saying can, is I can see a thing. I can see it. You're putting in their PBs, rightfully so. And let's just say within that in that time frame, right? Asafa was probably in nine eight, nine seven shape. N- not right? Asafa, not Asafa. He was injured. No, no, before year. before he got injured though. He was yeah, in that he okay, was in that yeah, shape. Okay. All right. So same thing with Freighter. Same thing with Nestor. They was in that nine eight shape, right? Now you look at Johan. Johan was we ran the finals maybe two, three, four days earlier before that. He's in nine seven shape. He ran nine seven five. Then you look at Bolt, who ran 9.63. And they still went out there to break the, the world record at 36.8. So they wasn't even priming. They weren't even 9.5, 9.6. Those guys were a little bit off of what their personal best was and still got the job done. So that's what I'm saying. Like that synergy, if Team USA can get that synergy together with that quartet, I think we're looking at something that's going to be dumb crazy. Man, I think, I think this, this, this clip might live all the way up until the Olympics of all these guys are healthy, man. You, Coleman to Fred to Arian to Noah, bro. Like, when I think about it now, I ain't gonna lie. That's, that, I don't, I don't see a team in this day and age beating that team if they could get to stick around, bro. Coleman to Fred. And I watched Arian this weekend. This kid is, is making his claim to USATF or why he should be on third leg. Man, keep putting him on third leg, man. He, he eat that 200-meter turn anyway. You know what I mean? And all his 19-second runs, he leads the turn um, with formidable opponents. I mean, like the best in the world who run the 200. He, 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 he's off that turn first. Uh, um, so No, go ahead. No, 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 not to, 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 to Noah. And, and Noah will definitely be insurance because anybody who is even, but I don't see Noah getting ran down by anybody. And, but I don't see anybody in the world that has a quartet, that power pack. But to my point, we've seen the U.S. have the four fastest legs all the time. And it, it doesn't work out. You're so right. A hundred, a hundred and ten percent. That's no knock. ten percent. That's no knock to them, but I'm saying, you putting it out this early, I would kind of work with those guys based on what they've already done and say, hey, 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 let's 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 get one or two more in before you guys get into your season, and see what happens. You know what I mean? I think those guys will definitely be up for it, being now that they have the world championship goal. And I think they want to bring that gold medal in the four by one back to the U.S. And you looking at guys who have a different mindset and not knocking any other elite sprinters that's out there. But you have a world champion on first leg. You have a world champion second leg. You have an Olympic, Olympic trials champion on your third leg. And you have uh, a world champion on your a triple gold world champion on your anchor leg. All those guys aren't scared of competition. Oh, no, well, well, let's not forget, Arian is a national champion, but he is a world silver medalist also. So you're talking about everybody on that team who you just called has an individual medal in the world championship. <laughs> Even that. I mean, his silver medal is, his silver medal is amazing, but I think that his, his Olympic trials championship win is because you know that where the Olympic trials is, that, that yes. sets you up for the Olympics. It you does, know what I mean? It that it's, it it sometimes it's harder for it's harder than the Olympics. So for him to go out there and run the way he ran, especially at the age he was at and doing what he did, he made history. We know that. What I'm saying is that one of the issues that America always had with relays is that we would get guys who would come in first, second, or third, or fourth across the 100 meters, and now they're obligated to put them in the relay pool. And you know how it would happen? We would have... Three guys who are top end runners and maybe one guy who is a starter. Or we have no starters and we have all top end runners. You know what I mean? Or we have three starters and they don't have no top end speed. (laughs) So it's a combination that we always would look at and be like, man, how do we fix this issue that we have? But the fact is, I think Team USA needs to to really get together and simulate like almost like a SEAL Team 6 relay team. Like, these are your guys who are previous champions in our sport. They have a winning mentality. They're hungry. 
If you they get the job done, give them a stipend, give them a bonus, give them whatever necessary to go out there and make sure they get the job done. An incentive. Those, they all are hungry. They don't want to lose. They I will think, step up and they'll step up to the challenge. I think that you got to talk to the coaches also because I think that's that's another thing. You know, a lot of coaches won't, wouldn't want to deviate from what they're doing to kind of foster that deal. So talking to the athletes and the coaches at the same time to be like, hey, look, this is what's happening. You sit the coaches down and say, hey, this is what we want to do as USATF, and this is what we want to have. We have these uh, seven or eight guys who we want to spin based on, you know, our numbers of, of before trials. And then after trials, we'll see what that looks like and make tweaks. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that's definitely a deal that, you know, uh, Mike Marsh, you know, shout out to Mike, <laughs> can look at. <laughs> shout out to Mike. For sure, for sure. So 